matter you've done your basic exercises and understand the split system and the different exercises to develop your body parts, you're now ready for power exercises. Because it's the power exercises that builds the ultimate of mass and power into your body. Without a doubt, bodybuilders produce some of the most striking physiques on the planet. They create a shape and proportion that is, at least by the aesthetics of physique competition, the most beautiful in human history. When they are in contest shape, nobody else on earth displays such definition, muscle separation, or vascularity. A top-level bodybuilder in contest condition looks like nothing less than a living anatomy chart. Qualities such as muscularity, shape, definition, and proportion are really the end products of a long process of training and diet. They represent the final product, and none of these attributes would be possible without a sufficient amount of the raw material of the whole enterprise, muscle. To succeed in the sport, a bodybuilder first has to build a solid, thick, fundamental structure of dense muscle mass. Bodybuilders are obviously concerned with training for detail. Detail being cuts, definition, muscular symmetry, their proportion. That's what the judges are looking for on stage. But before you can train for detail, you got to train for size to get big, massive muscles. Of course, the necessity to build a foundation of muscle doesn't just apply to would-be bodybuilding champions. Anyone wanting to build, shape, and develop his or her body with weight training for health, for athletics, or just trying to look and feel better is faced with the same challenge, building muscle mass. Most types of weight training pioneered and developed by bodybuilders over the past several decades do build muscle, but building the maximum amount of mass and strength possible requires a very specific approach to progressive resistance training and the application of certain weeder training principles more than others. There is a specific type of training just for this. While there are weeder principles for quality and definition work, there are also weeder principles for getting big, massive muscles. In this tape, we will describe the most effective and efficient ways of training for mass and strength and examine which weeder principles are most helpful in achieving these goals. We will answer such questions as, what exercises are best for mass training? How much weight do you need to build maximum size? What kind of reps and sets program should you follow? How often should you train? How quickly? How much rest and recuperation do you need? What special training principles should you employ? And what kind of diet is best for getting big and strong? Of course, the overall volume of a muscle is affected by a number of factors. Mitochondrial mass, for example, the energy factories within a muscle cell, glycogenation, the amount of carbohydrates stored in the cell, and blood supply. But the most important structure that contributes to muscle size and strength, particularly as far as bodybuilders are concerned, is muscle fiber. You produce the most massive and strongest muscle possible by hypertrophying the muscle fiber, that is, making it bigger and stronger. You accomplish this by following the proper program of progressive resistance weight training and using the appropriate training principles to build maximum mass. And the most basic of these is training with heavy weight. You have to have some muscle to work with before you start finishing it off. If you don't have the mass, there's nothing to finish. Then you're wasting time doing a lot of finishing movements when you don't have the muscle to finish off. I still think I would be influenced to work reasonably heavy. You can go for the burn all you want, and you will not get results. I agree with you that the, the heavier weights is where it's at as far as putting on the, the mass. You really have to train for mass by training with heavy weights to interject and stimulate the muscles into responding. They need to develop the muscle mass in order to get it to have enough mass to file down later on for a competition. And the only way to get that mass is to use heavy power training. If you would normally do come in every, every week and do um, 305 on the bench. Once a month, you should come in and go up to at least 405. 
and, and the same thing go for the back and the shoulders, as well as the legs and every, every other body part. When I'm training for mass during the week, I like to take the first portion of the week and train heavy movements uh, early in the week. And then by the time I get to the ending of the week, those movements lighten up because your energy level dips. So therefore, trying to get the most out of my training is in a mass building process is in the first portion of the week, the first three days. So delts one week, you go heavy. Same thing applies for the back, same thing applies for the chest, and the same thing applies for the thighs. So once a week is more than enough. The weight must be heavy enough to, to stimulate uh, the, the muscle, but not too heavy that uh, it hurts your muscle. Only do what your mind and your body can handle. Don't do more. Bodybuilders need to train with heavy weights. Women bodybuilders as well as men. A muscle fiber is a muscle fiber. And if women bodybuilders, or women training for health, fitness, and shape for that matter, don't train with substantial amounts of weight, they simply won't see the kinds of results they're working so hard for. Power training is especially important for women bodybuilders because they come to the gym, they're not used to handling heavy weights, they've been told all their lives, you know, don't touch that, it's too heavy, you can't train, you're gonna get muscle bound. Well, their bodies work just the same as a man's body. It responds to the same type of training as a man's body. They need to develop the muscle mass in order to get it, to have enough mass to file down later on for a competition. And the only way to get that mass is to use heavy power training. I found that it was um, quite easy to put the size on as long as it stayed fairly heavy and lower reps. And until they reach um, the potential that they want to be at, or should I say get, get to the size that they want to be at, then they can lighten up their, their reps and their weights and, and stick to, to higher reps. What a lot of women don't realize is that to get results, sometimes, somewhere in their, in their training career, they must train for mass. And in order to do that, they have to really bite the bullet and train heavy to stimulate the muscle into growth. I know that a lot of women listening to me are probably going to say, oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to look like a weightlifter or a, you know, East German swimmer or whatever image they have about over-muscled women. What they don't realize is when you talk about toning, when you talk about firm and tight bodies, you're talking about no nothing more than muscle mass. And I think every woman alive wants a tight, firm body. A woman in bodybuilding definitely needs a certain amount of muscle. She needs to define it. With, 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 without the muscle, she, can't, she has nothing to define. You can go for the burn all you want, and you will not get results. You will get burn and lactic acid buildup. And I've known lots of women who have burned their way through aerobics videos, and they get nothing but uh, burnt out muscles. That does nothing for shape. The athletes who lift the heaviest weight are weightlifters. That's the point of their sport. Bodybuilders are not weightlifters, but when it comes to building mass and strength, these two types of athletes have a lot in common. I'm a competitive powerlifter. I'm only concerned with how much weight I can lift. I don't have to worry on how I'm going to look on stage. But the weeder principles that I use in my power training can also be used by bodybuilders who are trained to get as big and massive as possible. How heavy do you need to train? Bodybuilding is not weightlifting, so how much weight you use is less important than how you feel working with a given weight and how training with it affects your body. In general, you choose a weight in bodybuilding that allows you to do a specific kind of set. For mass training, this is generally a weight that allows you to do six to eight reps in each set. If you can do too many more reps than this, the weight is too light to allow you to build maximum mass and strength. If you fail before you reach the sixth rep, the weight you're using is too heavy. Training heavy is important for building mass, but what kind of training equipment you use is also extremely important. For the most part, bodybuilders intent on building maximum mass and strength should rely as much as possible on free weights, barbells and dumbbells. The human body has evolved over millions of years to deal with the force of gravity, to lift, carry and move things that have weight. 
When you lift a barbell or dumbbell, your body has to stabilize the weight against gravity. Secondary muscles, ligaments, and joints all come into play. The electrical activity in the entire nervous system that results when you do this is a clear sign of how much attention the body pays to something that has weight, as opposed to something that simply offers resistance, such as a machine in which you push back and forth along a track or rotate a cam. Free weight it is the best form of training because you can utilize machines. I believe machines like 20% of bodybuilding, 15%. The advantage about free weight, you have a greater freedom range of motion. You control the weight. You work other muscles. You're not going one direction. You have other muscles coming to play. And the fact that that enables you to stretch more, work out more, and keep the tension. When you use the machines, you go one direction, and the machine actually helps do the exercise for you, with you. With free weight, it's 100% of yourself. I was brought up in the old school of bodybuilding where the free weights uh, the way you gain size. I myself enjoy being big, I like being muscular, and I don't think I could ever achieve it through using machines. You know, you've seen Arnold back in the, you know, the, the days when he started, all free weights, and those guys were, they were big, big muscular men. I think that if you want to build mass, you use the barbells. I'm an old timer, believing in barbells and dumbbell presses to build the mass. I don't think you can build muscle size through machines. This is only my opinion. Uh, other people disagree. I would use, say, the machine presses, if I want to do something like a superset, you can get a little bit more you know, creative doing a superset of, say, side laterals, cables supersetted with, say, a machine press. And I can get more isolation in that delt, but it's more of like a shaping exercise and more of a finishing exercise that would it do right before, you know, getting ready for a contest. But I do think that you can get a much nicer toner-looking physique through machines. How well you're able to build mass is also a matter of what kind of exercises you do. For the most part, the best mass building movements are two joint exercises. That is, ones that involve the movement of two joints, such as presses, rows, leg presses, and squats as opposed to isolation exercises such as curls. Extensions. Or laterals in which movement takes place only at one joint. Two joint exercises involve more different muscles, which is ideal for mass training. They also give you a mechanical leverage advantage, which means you can handle more weight and give your muscles that much harder a workout. Daily training for mass will only center around the movements that I use, which will be basically power movements, any two-handed or two-footed movements that are designed to give me the most power in any type of exercise that I choose. You want to use exercises that's going to be the most effective for you. You want to use basic movements such as power clean movements. You want to use uh, all your push-pull basic movements, presses, overhead, squatting, to build overall body mass. And for the back, it would be T-bar run. For your back, uh, bend over a T-bar, thick, lat thickness building movements. Uh, leg pressing, for example, is my favorite for the uh, leg building. Of course, training heavy with free weights doesn't mean you forget everything you know about technique, how muscles work and what angles to work them to get the best results. You're working uh, a rear or behind the neck press will put, bring your arms more back so that you can hit slightly on the side delt as also the front delt, but it is a mass exercise. When you're doing front presses or military presses, you're working more on just your front head of your delts when you're working out. Then when you get to use dumbbells, you get more freedom of motion to work you know, each arm individually, plus you can rotate the arms in different ways. We can get a different feel on the deltoid, working the side and also the front.
cutting down on your rest between sets, doing more in the same or less time, and adding additional sets and reps to your workout are all ways of increasing training intensity, but they don't apply when it comes to mass training. To build mass, you have to lift heavy weights. To lift heavy, you need to be as strong as possible. And there are several ways to ensure you're as fresh and strong as possible whenever you do a mass building set. Do your heavy mass training sets at the beginning of your workout. Get plenty of rest between heavy sets, at least one minute, although more than three minutes will not create added recuperation. Schedule your heavy workouts at the beginning of your training cycle. When you're doing a lot of heavy training, take extra days off if you feel you haven't totally recovered. In power type training, rest and recuperation are very important. Rest between sets and rest between workouts. Uh, without enough rest between sets, you're gonna risk uh, getting sloppy with your movements, you're gonna, you're gonna be a little bit weak on your next set, and you risk injury that way. Without enough rest between workouts, uh, you're basically not gonna have enough time to recover. The more intense you train in this power type training, the more recuperation. You have two var variables. You have training and you have recuperation or rest. If you increase one, you have to increase the other. One doesn't go without the other. Keep in mind, you stimulate growth when you train, but actual growth takes place during the period of recuperation following training. If your sets are intense enough, extending your rest time between workouts can often increase growth. So don't be in too much of a hurry to get back onto the bench or back into the gym when you're training for size and strength. But remember, more than three minutes rest is a waste of time since by then you'll get all the recovery possible during that workout. You also need to extend your rest time between heavy workouts, either by adding extra rest days or by cycling training. That is, scheduling lighter workouts in between heavy training days. So at least once a week, you should do one, at least you know, one workout that's just for mass. You don't want to do it all the time because then it becomes very hard on the joints. And they can't take it. Yeah, power training is great, but you cannot do it all the time. You have to cycle your training. You have to be able to give your body a time to relax. You can't be stressing your joints. Power training is extremely stressful on the joints of your body and on the connective tissue. So you have to be able to step back and train a little more relaxed and a little more conventional in between. You know, say you do uh, six or eight week cycles of each, and uh, this works out fine. It gives your body time to recover, it gives your joints time to recover, and you don't have the, the risk of injury. Bodybuilding training is done using a full range of motion, going from full extension of the muscles to full contraction. However, when you work a muscle through a full range of motion, you don't work more muscle fibers, you simply work the same muscle fibers more often. This involves endurance, and endurance has nothing to do with mass and power training. Besides, you put yourself in a position of leverage disadvantage at the extreme range of motion in many exercises, which means you can handle less weight. Also, stretching too far when working with heavy weights can increase the risk of injury. So for best results when you're training for mass and strength, train through an adequate range of motion. But don't worry about stretching too far at the bottom or locking out too much at the top. Muscle tissue is composed of muscle fibers. And there are two basic different kinds of fiber types. White fast twitch fiber, which is capable of a limited number of very fast and powerful contractions. And red slow twitch fiber, which is not as powerful, but can continue to contract for high numbers of repetitions. When you train for strength and power, you tend to recruit white fiber, which is about 22% larger than red fiber. Endurance workouts, on the other hand, any kind of exercise which involves sustained activity over a long period of time, relies more heavily on the action of red fiber. Therefore, the most effective kinds of mass training are usually those which are designed to develop the maximum amount of white fiber. There are two basic types of muscle fibers we see, the white fast twitch fibers, which are for ballistic quick motions, and then we have the red slow twitch, which has a lot of hemoglobin in it, and is more for endurance competition. 
Sometimes you have a combination or a mixing of both of these and different muscle groups have different degrees or different ratios of red as well as white fibers. And it depends on the type of body prototype the individual was born with as well as the type of training that they are, that they are performing on a regular basis. You mentioned something about white fibers. Is there a difference between white and red fib muscle fibers? Yes, there is a big difference. White muscle fiber is generally considered for speed. That's what will give you your mass. Red muscle fiber is usually for endurance type exercises, like if you do a real long set or for, for a marathon runner. Now, white muscle fiber is about 20% larger than red, red muscle fiber. So if you can recruit more white muscle fiber in your workout, you will definitely get more massive. When you train white fiber properly, you generally are involving red fiber as well. However, the opposite is not true. No, the opposite is definitely not true. Long, slow sets or time-intensive training where you don't give your muscles much time to recover are great for training red fiber, but only movements that are explosive, where speed is a factor and where the anaerobic fiber is given time to rest and recuperate are guaranteed to get the maximum response from white, fast-twitch fiber. There is a kind of weight training that is designed to do all of the above. It's based on the weeder speed principle, and it's called compensatory acceleration. An excellent mass building technique is taking the weight, and instead of under a slow and controlled movement, using what we call compensatory acceleration, and that's using the weight a little bit faster. Now usually this is done in a power type workout in the six to eight repetition range. What moving the weight faster is gonna do is gonna call in more of the white muscle fibers. And also you're gonna to wanna to keep a continuous overload on the muscles and also keep a great deal of leverage. In other words, um, two jointed movements, such as pressing movements for the chest, pressing movements for the thighs, this sort of thing. Mike, show me how you'd normally do these dumbbell presses. Sure. I try to keep my form nice and strict, never letting the weight get out of control. Do as many reps as I can without losing that control of the weight. Strict form is very important, but there's also a way to turn this into a super mass building exercise by using the weeder principle of acceleration. Why don't we go ahead and try it? Let's do it. There was 20 or 30 more pounds in the bar. It's actually the same weight you used in the first place. Well, I noticed I got more of a pop out of that set, too. It worked a lot harder. Incredible. The explosive type training I'm talking about as far as for, for putting on size is different than powerlifting in that you're, you're doing controlled sets. You're not just going for a max amount of weight for a single repetition or even doing, you know, sets of four just to build strength. You're building muscle, too, so you're doing controlled movements, but in an explosive fashion. It's not just pure powerlifting, just pure, just trying to move the weight. You're still feel, still filling the weight, but you're training as, as heavy and explosive as possible with maintain, maintaining control. So it's a controlled explosion from the bottom, and you follow through with it all the way. Uh, it's It's... Constant acceleration. You want to think of accelerating the weight through the movement instead of just you know moving the weight. You want to be constantly trying to accelerate, push harder as you're going up. And uh, this is the way it puts a lot of stress in the muscle and you get a lot of good results from it. And hey, this is lightweight for you, isn't it? Actually is, but it, it's enough weight just to show you the weaker acceleration principle. Squatting, what, what's your heaviest squat anyways? 964. 964, you got this. This is ice cream for you. Let's go.
Watch how I accelerate from the bottom. Oh, legs, huh? Nice and strict, too. Yeah, that's why you pause a little bit. You're pausing at the bottom? No problem. You're in. I can see that was really tough for you. Ice cream, baby, ice cream. Supposedly one of the wonders of modern exercise machines is their ability to give you variable leverage. Well, actually, compensatory acceleration, which is the basis of power training, also gives you variable leverage. It works this way. When you're going through a movement, you have, at different points, uh, at a leverage advantage or leverage disadvantage. That is, you're stronger in some places because of mechanical advantage and you're weaker in others. Now, if you're accelerating the weight as much as you can, if you're driving the weight up ballistically, what happens is, at the parts of the movement in which you're stronger, you drive the weight faster, which makes it heavier. Now, at the parts where you're not as strong, uh, where you're weaker, then the weight is lighter. So what you've done is you've created a situation in which, when you're weaker, the weight is lighter. When you're stronger, the weight is heavier. For instance, in a bench press, as you get the bar down to your uh, chest, then you're weaker. So as you accelerate up, you can't push it as fast. The bar at that point is lighter. But as you start to straighten out your arms and you get a mechanical advantage, well, at that point, the bar becomes heavier. You're stronger, the bar is heavier. Well, that's variable leverage. You don't need a complicated exercise machine to do that. You can do it with free weights and compensatory acceleration. Training to failure is another familiar training principle to most bodybuilders. It means continuing with any given set until you can't squeeze out any more reps with the weight you're using without stopping to rest. But this doesn't work with acceleration training. Acceleration training is designed to generate power. And what does this exactly mean? Power is different from strength. Strength is your ability to lift the weight a given distance. But in power, time comes into play. Power is a measure of the weight times the distance, divided by the time. That is, the faster you lift it, the more power you generate. We racked it because you weren't accelerating more, which means you weren't generating enough power. When you can't generate enough power, it's not good for mass training. I understand that I felt that when I was coming towards the end of the eighth rep. So for acceleration training, you don't train to failure, you train to the failure of power. That is, you keep going until you can't accelerate the weight anymore. When power fails, stop. Take a rest for a minute or more. Then come back for another acceleration set. Again, what we're doing is working that white muscle fiber. In order to do that, we have to accelerate from the bottom of the movement all the way up to the top. Controlling on the way down exploding on the way up, squeezing those lats. <clears throat> Remember, six to eight reps to the failure of power. I would suggest you exercise caution with fast ballistic movements. Again, when you move quickly, it's now an inertial factor. You have weight moving at a very rapid speed. So this type of training just hits the white muscle fibers of the body in order for you to gain more mass? It hits a lot more white muscle fiber than red muscle fiber. You, you obviously do it in your training, but if, if you can consci consciously know that you are doing it, you can do it all the time. And I still have the feeling that doing this type of exercise, I'll be throwing the weight around, doing cheating. Oh, not at all. You're actually controlling the weight more than you normally would. You're concentrating with your mind more. Training explosively is not uh, cheating and it's not uh, totally dis disorienting yourself from the movement. You still want to have that mind-muscle link and you still want to feel the movement through the range, but you're going to do it explosively. Remember, endurance is not a factor. Take your time and generate maximum intensity in each set. Make sure you rest between sets and don't overtrain by trying to do too much heavy training in the same workout. 
And finally, when making the transition from heavy training to quality training in an eclectic workout, employ all the Weeder quality training principles listed in tape nine, such as full range of motion, peak contraction, etc. Since training heavy helps build muscle, all things considered, the heavier you're able to train and still manage to do six or eight reps, the more muscle mass you can build. One intensity training principle that helps you to do this is forced reps, a technique in which your training partner helps you to lift a weight just a little too heavy for you, or to force out more reps in a set than you could do on your own. Say you're bench pressing 250 pounds. If you want to increase your bench press, basically you reduce, say you do eight reps for 250. We will strip the weight. After you do one set, do 225 and 200. The next time you handle 260 or 270, because the fourth rep, you have someone there to spot you. You force yourself to increase the rep. By say you do eight reps, you can't do two more. You have a training partner to help you for a fourth rep. The next time you can handle the same weight and do 10 repetitions, then the next workout, you hand in more weight. So with the fourth rep technique, enables you to be stronger and stronger. You do have to eat to grow. However, many bodybuilders training to get huge over the years have chosen to satisfy their nutritional needs simply by eating a lot. So what's basic for me is beef, ketchup, and Coca-Cola. Unfortunately, taking in calories indiscriminately like this may give your body what it needs to build muscle, but taking in all those excess calories is also likely to make you fat, which means dieting for definition becomes that much more difficult. Heavy training creates the demand for nutrients in the body. If you want to get big and strong, you have to supply whatever nutrients the body needs and deliver them when the body is most ready to absorb them. Tape 8 of the Weeder system covers diet and nutrition at great length, but here is a summary of what, when, and how much to eat to give your body what it needs to build maximum mass. Eat at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight on days when you're doing intense training. Eat five or six smaller meals during the day rather than two or three larger meals. Take in both protein and carbs immediately after any intense workout. Fat intake should be kept low to moderate in your diet. Drink plenty of water to allow your metabolism to function most efficiently. You need to eat an adequate diet with supplements. It is especially important to eat protein during the window of opportunity, before, during, and after your workout. When I'm training for mass, I like to eat a lot of vari uh, variations of food, primarily beef. 90% uh, beef and whatever goes with it will have beef on top of it. When I'm mass training, I do up my carbs. Unlike when I'm contest training, I drop my carbs and up my protein. I do just the opposite when I'm, when I'm mass training. Train with heavy weights. Your muscles will not grow unless you overload them with progressively heavy poundage. Choose a weight that allows you to do sets of six to eight reps. Rely on free weights, barbells and dumbbells for your mass and strength building workouts. Build mass using two joint compound exercises such as presses, rows, deadlifts, squats and leg presses. Do your mass training at the beginning of your workouts or beginning of your training cycle when you're the strongest and the most rested. Rest at least one minute between heavy sets, but no more than three minutes. Take extra days off when necessary to allow for complete recuperation when you're doing heavy mass training. Cycle your training alternating heavy and light training workouts or groups of workouts. Use the compensatory acceleration principle to develop the maximum of white fiber with ballistic movements. 
trained to the failure of power, your ability to accelerate a weight rather than to the point where you can't move the weight at all. Handle heavier weights doing forced reps with the help of a training partner. To develop as much mass and strength as possible, eat at least one gram of protein for every pound of body weight on heavy training days, and eat a sufficient number of calories to allow your body to grow. Remember, strict dieting and maximum muscle gains don't mix. Now that you know everything you have to know about power training and building mass and power, you must master nutrition, because nutrition is what's going to turn your mass training and power training into muscularity, shaping and muscularizing and hardening your body. You don't have to begin weight training at 15, 16, 20. It could be, you could begin weight training at 70 because the important thing it makes you feel good about yourself. Bodybuilding can have a positive effect on anybody's life. Uh, it can help you lose weight and give you more confidence. You don't have to be a champion. You know, to be involved in bodybuilding, it's just, it's the thrill of watching your body change and, and just loving it, you know.